Welcome to this week's video. I hope you're all doing really well and thanks for watching. So the last three and a half weeks have been a little bit of a whirlwind for us. Um, they've been quite relentless to be honest. I think we're coming to the other side of it, knock on wood. Um, I've already recorded a video maybe a week ago saying that. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, I do think that brighter days are on the horizon for us. We've also entered into a new cold spell here. And so it's been freezing in our house. And last night we used the last of the wood. We've started sleeping in the living room again because the nights get so cold. Um, but yeah, it's been... It is what it is, but definitely next winter we want to get a little bit more um, winter proof for the house. Um, so in the last three weeks, like I mentioned, um, I went away for a work trip. The boys got sick. I came home. I got sick twice. Then our car broke down. Then our youngest got sick. And yeah it's just been relentless and I mean our life like I'm very grateful for it and a lot of times I feel like oh my gosh how are we living such a dreamy life but I mean sometimes it can just feel like what is happening <laughs> and that's how the last three weeks were it's like when it rains it pours no breaks, no time for us as parents to really recenter and ground. Um, yeah, it was a challenging, challenging time. So I'm glad to be getting on the other side to have the motivation to film today and hopefully get a video all edited up um, to get out there. So the theme of this video is water. Um, I was thinking that we would give you a little sense of the water sources that we have on our land, what we've done to secure more water and since we've been here, and what we still hope to, hope to do. Um, so John and I will talk a little bit about all of that, and yeah. <laughs> pond when we moved in there was a very tiny pond that we just uh, improved to make it much bigger 
there are also four wells that are called font shear uh, so it's not these big wells big round wells but it's more of a very small uh, stone well that is not very deep so that doesn't hold that much water but still is a great resource is and that not a pozo? no so the pozo is the big one the bigger uh, one okay. and the font is the very small one okay then that we have gotcha. and uh, finally now we have a borehole in order to achieve more uh, self-sufficiency when it comes to water uh, because we are totally off-grid when it comes to water we don't have the main water and it's probably never going to happen because of how isolated our area is uh, so it was very important for us to directly as soon as possible make everything we could to be uh, as secure as possible when it comes to water yeah so when we moved in <clears throat> the owner had left us a little pump for the well for one of the wells to bring water to the house and we quickly found out that that was more of a pump to bring water to a small garden <laughs> not to bring water going up a hill towards our house and it um, broke down after what a week or yeah, so like it not broke even down a week very quick we had lots of problems with it so we bought a new pump we had someone come and set it up and so now since then all of the water that goes to the house is from that one well which I think is pretty cool actually because we do have smaller wells and just the fact that as a family of four we can live off of that water. I mean we're talking baths, showers, doing dishes, um, brushing our teeth and we've also used it to water our garden. So yeah, we don't have a washing machine that would take a lot more water that's for the future. Um, but yeah, like we can do the basics without without problem. I think it dried up maybe a handful of times since we moved in, including the summer. And again, like I was actually really surprised that it didn't dry up more than that in yeah. the summer. So that well is connected to a spring that basically recharges uh, the well every day when we use the water. Yeah. So for us, it was really important um, Kind of the first thing that we really prioritized after moving in was getting as secure as possible with water again since as john said we're not connected to city water or anything so the water we have on our land is really important for us so um we we had a small pond that was already here when we moved in we moved in in may so it was already like really low and by what yeah, july or, yeah. it was practically Almost, yeah almost dry yeah it was almost dry we hired one of our neighbors actually um, to come and dig out a very very large pond or small lake um, he came with his bulldozer and excavator and it took he thought it was gonna take three days it ended up taking a week because the machine one of the machines broke down once but he came and he dug, 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 dug. And then we asked him to take all of the dirt that he dug and put it up onto where we're gonna, where we, we're in the process of doing our veggie garden. Because as we mentioned in the last video, our soil was not soil, it was dirt and rock. So we thought we'll bring all of the, the most nutrient dense soil that we have on our land probably. Yeah. We'll bring that up onto the garden. And then we had him, um, do some like a little terrace so that the slope is not too steep then to it was so cool to watch they would they made this dam wall basically um, so they would push the dirt there and then they would like go back and forth then push more dirt go back and forth push more dirt go, and it would slowly become a dam wall it was it was really cool yeah the the idea of that is really to compact the dirt as much as possible so that the water doesn't go through the wall and so the pond can be uh, fully uh, proof so that uh, we don't have any infiltration of the water and we can keep all the water in the pond except of course for the evaporation that we will have a lot in summer uh, so after they built the wall 
one of the last step uh, was to do the incline after the wall uh, to make it as smooth and, and not too steep as possible. And finally to build the spillway. Uh, so they came with the very old handmade level where one guy would sit uh, at one end of the pond, the other guy would be at the other end with this level. It's just basically a tube filled with water and so you can just look like that and see if it's level. And so they, did, they, they decided of the height of the spillway and then mm. yeah, they just finished the whole work by digging that spillway down and building a small wall all along the, the spillway. So once they dug at the bottom, they they hit a nascente uh, a spring a spring yeah so that's nice too because that fills the lake a little bit as well we had one really big rainfall it was during one of his work trips and the lake filled up like halfway then we had one other really huge rainfall and that filled the lake and more. We have a spillway coming from the lake and it just was flow, like we got so much rain in just a couple days, so. It's officially fully full and spilling over. And one, one of the things that was very impressive to watch is when it rained, when we had these two big, big rainfall, uh, we saw how the force of the rain really destroyed basically that spillway, like eroded so much of it. Uh, it made like a canyon. Yeah, it made like a small canyon with kind of a tiny little waterfall and really dug almost like a meter of dirt. Now our lake is full, so we're going to be using that for irrigation <clears throat> um, during the summer. We can go down and get our bucket full of water. Um, it's also a great way to protect from fires, to have a big body of water near our house. Um, and if we ever needed it to put out a fire. Or so moderates temperature. Mm -hmm. But for wildlife, it's just, of course, amazing to have water. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it really, it's a big part of the ecosystem here now already. We see the, the impact it has on the birds especially. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, after we did the lake, we started, we've seen a heron three or four times. Yeah. Um, it's brought a bunch of new species of birds. Yeah, we see the, the barn swallows coming and feed and drink above the, the lake. Uh, just many birds all the time. Yeah. And at night now we get a symphony of frogs, yeah. which is really cool. Um, and we think maybe, maybe there was an otter. So it's either an otter or a fox or a genette from uh, the poop that we see on the rock by the lake and several people tried to identify what it is so so far it can be either oh, yeah one yeah, of one these of three them. animals yeah oh and in the future we so probably what this summer we'll we'll plant filtrating plants how do you what's the process of doing that next idea is gonna be to plant some aquatic plants in order to filter the water and clean the water uh, so that it can be as beautiful and clean as possible. And for that, we've contacted a company located in Algarve and uh, they recommend basically to plant uh, plants on a third of the size of the pond. <clears throat> and we are not sure it's gonna be possible for us because a big part of the pond is just a rock slope. Uh, so there is not any dirt left on, on this side, so not sure we can plant anything or if we could bring more dirt to plant, I don't know. We'll see what he says, but um, we would love to do that in the future. It's gonna be very beneficial to just have a uh, better quality of water. And we wanna be able to swim and we wanna be able to and swim. And if we can swim in it, of course, it would be incredible. 
Uh, right now, after just a few months, we see the algae building every day. We see a difference, like it's really building a lot. The water <coughs> is not too dirty, but it's definitely not fully clear at all. Uh, so now it, yeah, it's it's just uh, in order to irrigate and not really to swim in it. But if we can do that in the future, that would be that would be good. Uh, we've seen in our neighbor's pond that bet between the winter and the summer, there is a difference of more or less two to three meters of height. So the water goes down two to three meters, which at the scale of a big pond makes a lot of liters of water. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will try to limit that evaporation by planting some aquatic plants, putting maybe water lilies to cover part of the pond, planting trees around the pond uh, to have more shade so that it also limits the evaporation. Mm -hmm. Do everything we can basically to save as much water as possible. Yeah. And then the other way that we secured some more water is that we had someone come and drill a borehole. So a borehole is where they drill, 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 deep, deep, deep down into the ground until they reach the aquifer. So to do the borehole, we first contracted the local company that was recommended by our neighbors because they did their borehole with them and basically all or most of the neighbors in our area used that, that same company. So we contacted them and agreed on the, on the conditions, on the price. And then we applied for the license. Uh, we waited a few weeks to get that license and then had to wait a bit more for the company to be available to come and do the borehole. Finally, they came, two people with this big truck and they did the borehole in two days. The first day was basically to dig and the second day was to set up the pipe. At 65 meters, they started to find water and then they asked, okay, what do you want to do? Do you want us to go a little bit further to find more water? We said, yeah, let's do a little bit more, but not too much because you pay per meter down. Um, and they stopped at 88 meters, finding a bit more water, but not significantly more. And finally, they said that we have more or less four to 500 liters per hour which is more than enough to uh, have water in the house uh, because the whole idea for us is to use that borehole only for the house and for drinking water uh, but we will try uh, in the future to set up a pump in our pond and irrigate our veggie garden and our fruit trees when they need with the water of the lake and keep the water of the borehole just for the house uh, for our own use. We are very conscious about the impact it has to dig a borehole, so we really want to use as little as possible and preserve as much as possible. And also by doing all of the things we do on our land to improve the soil, plant trees, etc., we also think that it will help recharge the aquifer down below and uh, limit the runoff of water out of the land. We really want to do everything we can to have the water soak into the land and go down, infiltrate, so that the water of the aquifer that's linked to the borehole is always there and we really preserve it. So there you have it. Those are the ways that we've secured water so far on our land since we moved in in May. We have lots of other ideas to implement down the road once we've saved up a little more money. We need to set up a pump and filtration system and piping from the borehole to the house and we would also like to start collecting rainwater with gutters along the roof and other reservoirs to collect the rainwater. We hope to switch to composting toilets down the road as well.